Example 5.5. In this example, we have a bathtub which is filled with water from a faucet. The rate of the flow of the faucet is steady and is given at 9 gallons per minute. The top volume is appropriate by a rectangular space which is shown. The problem is to estimate the time rate of change of the depth of the water of the top, the HDT, in inches per minute at any instant. Notice that because this problem is required to evaluate a quantity per unit time, it is considered a non-steady problem. We have uh, a control volume provided by this boundary. We have the uh, one uh, control surface, which is the entrance, um, and we do not have a control surface for exit. The control surface entering, we notice that the velocity is constant. We start with the Reynolds transfer theorem for mass, which gives us continuity for the control volume. The first term, it is not going to be neglected because in this case we have a non-steady case, therefore we cannot make it equal to zero. And for the second term, we are only going to evaluate one control surface, which is the entrance. And because the velocity is constant, we could reduce this to simply the mass flow rate going in. Let's now tackle how do we deal with this term. The information that we know is that the volume is going to overall volume of the control volume is going to remain constant. Therefore, this integral could simply become rho v. And we put it inside of the derivative with respect to time. So this becomes d dt rho v. And then this term over here was simply the mass flow rate at point 0.1. And because it's in common, we have it to be negative and we make it equal to zero. The quantities that we have in this derivative are density and volume. Because density remains constant, we could take it out of the integral. However, the volume changes with time, therefore we cannot take it out of the integral. This simplifies to rho dv dt minus, and the definition of m uh, that one is equal to rho v1 a1 and is equal to zero. Therefore, this reduces to dv dt and that is equal to the incoming flow rate. For us to be able to solve this equation, we need to have the volume of the fluid inside of the control volume. Notice that we have, for water, we have two components this rectangular area, and we also have this cylinder part. So the total volume that we're going to have for water is going to be the bottom area, which is 10 feet square, okay? and the height, which provides the volume of this rectangle. So we're gonna write it as 10 H, and then we're gonna add the volume of this part of the cylinder, which is simply AJ, which is the jet area. And the height that is going to be is going to be 1.5 minus h. So let's rewrite this. And we have that this is going to be equal to uh, 10h plus 1.5 aj minus aj times h. And let's put it together in, uh, in terms of h we're going to have that h is 10 minus aj plus 1.5 aj. Now that we have the volume, we're going to substitute it into this derivative, and we write d dt of h 10 minus aj plus 1.5 the area of the jet that is equal to q1 and let's now take the derivative the derivative of the first term these two quantities are constant so they're able to go out of the derivative so it becomes 10 minus aj and we multiply that by the h 
ut. The derivative of the second term is equal to zero since both quantities are constant. And that is going to be equal to q1. Therefore, if we solve for the h dt, we find that that is equal to q1 and 10 minus the value of aj. And this is how we are able to find the rate of change of the elevation as a function of time. Notice that for us to be able to find the actual value, we need to have the cross-sectional area of aj. However, for this particular example, we assume that this area is smaller, considerably smaller than the area that we have over here. So we could simply say that the aj is smaller than 10 feet square. So we could simply uh, rewrite this equation as the h dt, and that is simply going to be q1 divided by 10 feet square. Therefore, if we substitute the values for q1, we find that the h dt is going to give us 1.44 inches uh, per minute, which are the required units for this particular problem. Notice that the value of the h dt is positive, which indicates that the value of h is increasing as a function of time. Once again, the key of this problem is to understand that this is an unsteady problem because one of the quantities related to volume changes as a function of time. What you need to do is establish the volume of the fluid that you are evaluating, and it has to be as a function of a variable that changes with time, in this case, h. You write the volume as a function of h, then you substitute it into the equation, which is equal to uh, the volume related uh, with time. You substitute your volume into here, and then you determine a variable or an equation for the h dt uh, with the information that is given. Once again, for this particular case, the relationship of the h dt is positive because h increases as a function of time. 